This solar panel has a feature I've never seen before. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys, Jason, KM4ACK. This solar panel has a feature that I've never seen before in another portable solar panel. And we're gonna talk about that, but first, let's cover a few of the basics and why this is the new solar panel I'll be running with the RV. So this is the OptiSolex Solar Bag 400, and it is a 440 watt panel coming in at 17 pounds. Well, just slightly over 17 pounds. Now, let me compare that to something else so you guys can get a bit of a better understanding here. This is the 200 watt panel that I've been running for the last couple of years with the RV. It weighs in at about 13 pounds and it's quite a bit bigger than this new OptiSolex. And anytime I can get more power in a smaller footprint, well, at least fold it up, that's a thumbs up for me. Now, if you start looking close, you can tell they've put a lot of thought into the design of this panel. It's got some high quality features in it. From the stitching that they used, which is very, very nice stitching, to the water resistant zippers that they used on the pouches. And yes, I did say pouches. I'll get to that in just a second. Let's go ahead and unzip this one. And you're going to find the normal MC4 connectors right here, along with the control box that gives you two USB-A and a USB-C. Speaking of those USB-C ports, they give us a max output of 45 watts with power delivery. Also, take a look at these bus bars and notice how close the bars are on the solar panel. These are the new Type-N panels, which give us better efficiency. Also, they've really helped us out by printing a lot of the pertinent information right here on the inside of this cover. Included with the panel is some straps to help you carry the panel. We've got the owner's manual and we've got a few clips to help you hang the panel up at just the right angle. In addition to that, we also get eight gauge cables ready to connect this panel to a battery. But here's where this really, really gets interesting. If we turn this bag around, you're going to find another pouch right here. And if we unzip this one, we've got the same MC4 connectors and another junction box with two more USB-A's and another USB-C. And those two separate sets of MC4 connectors might give you a clue about the superpower that this panel has. Okay, so for this first test, I have just got the panel laying flat on the hood of my truck, and you'll see that it pretty much covers the entire hood of a Ford F-250. Right down here, we've got the cables connected together. I put the positive and negative together to run these two panels in series. Now, let's go ahead and see what kind of output we're getting from the panel. And as you can see, I'm getting somewhere between 180 and about 210 uh, watts of power coming back into the Opus Mega One. Now keep in mind that's with that solar panel laying flat and we're at a really poor time of the year for solar production. Now one other test I want to run because shading is a real problem for most solar panels. So I want to see I've got this piece of black cardboard here. I'm going to drop it on top of the panel and let's just see kind of how much it cuts down on the power production. A lot of times this can be as much as 90%. And there you go. We've dropped from about 200 watts of input to about uh, 115. There comes up to 134, 135. So it doesn't look like that a little bit of shading is going to kill these panels the way it has other panels in the past. Now I'm trying to help these panels out as much as possible with this low angle of sun. So I went ahead and slid the panel up on top of the windshield to angle it a little bit better towards the sun. Let's see what kind of a difference that makes. And it did help a little bit. We've jumped up from about 200 watts of input to about 223. I have seen it go as high as 230. Now it's been a few hours since I conducted that first test and while it's still November and I can't do much about that, for being this time of year and just not getting great sunlight. Let's take a look and see that we're now getting about 270 watts out of that panel. Now, it will be interesting when I run this test again during the summer months when we have that peak solar action going on. If you guys aren't already subscribed to the newsletter, there's a link to it down in the description below. I often do follow-ups to this type of video 
in the newsletter. Now my neighbor came outside just after that last test, so we took the panel over to his south facing fence and wound up getting 340 watts out of the panel, and that's with this low angle of sun in November. Here's the coolest feature of this panel. That's the zipper right in the middle. We can simply unzip this panel and separate it into two 220 watt panels. With each panel having its own separate MC4 connectors and the two junction boxes where you can plug up some extra USB devices. Which gives us the options of running this together as one large panel or running it separate as two smaller 220 watt panels. And that's exactly why I've been so excited to get this panel in my hands. You guys know I love modular approaches to everything. And this is the new solar panel for the RV. And it gives us multiple ways to wire these together. If you want, you can run both of these panels in parallel at 440 watts, but they don't include the Y adapter that you'll need. However, the solution that I'm going to use is run these in series, which is super simple to do. You simply take the positive from one, and the negative from the other and connect it together. Now we're running at a higher voltage, which allows us to run smaller cables if we need to and not have to worry about so much loss. Now I can take that 440 watt panel, move it out away from the RV in case we're parked in the shade and just pipe it right into the solar on the side. That feeds through the solar charge controller on the other side of this door and straight into the battery. As an additional add-on, OptiSolex also offers the Solex Brick S1. This is a waterproof MPPT charge controller. It'll take solar input anywhere from 10 to 50 volts, and the cool thing about it is it auto detects the voltage of your battery system. So it can handle 12 volt batteries, 24 volt systems, and 48 volt systems. And there's nothing you have to do to set up exactly what it has. It's got some intelligence built into it that auto detects the voltage that your battery system needs and applies the correct voltage. And this thing is super rugged. It's built from alloy and it's in a waterproof IP68 enclosure. So you don't have to worry about this thing if you leave it out in the weather. It comes in at just over one pound of total weight and it will fit in the big zipper compartment on the 440 watt solar panel. So hopefully now you can understand why this is going to be my new go-to portable solar panel when we're out in the RV. Having that full 440 watt capability gives me a lot of additional capacity in addition to what's already on the roof of our RV. The modularity that allows me to split that into two separate 220 watt panels is absolutely phenomenal because now I can charge multiple devices at the same time if I need to or I can loan out part of that panel if I need to do that. Having that Solex Brick S1 is just icing on the cake. That allows me to take care of all the batteries that I might need to. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.